Coming up on this edition of Out of the Blue from Middle Tennessee State University, we celebrate the 50th anniversary of Murphy Center by showing you behind the scenes action by our students from the College of Media and Entertainment for the Judd's Red Carpet Show before their concert in November. Also, we talk to you about the improvements to this glass house and we recap the history of all the things that happened here in this memory making building. I'm Andrew Oppman and this is Out of the Blue. Hi. Well, what's it like partnering with one of the biggest universities, MTSU, and they're going to be hosting this? They love me. <laughs> they love me so much. It's their anniversary, too. So you're taking two anniversaries and putting them together. It's like the greatest prom ever. 50-something um, years for them? 50 years for them. So it's 50 for them, 31 for me. And we were a big deal back then. And we did it at MTSU, and that was our final concert. They really love the fact that I'm coming back there because of that. And I think it will give them an opportunity to get some attention, which, whatever it takes, right? So we're going to have a big party, and that's what life is about, having celebrations. Welcome to Out of the Blue. I'm Andrew Oppman, and yes, Winona is right. We do love her, and we love that she brought the Judd's final concert Love is Alive, to Murphy Center in November. It provided an opportunity for our students and faculty in the College of Media and Entertainment to showcase their skills and have a once in a lifetime experience. Let's go behind the scenes and see what that was like. While on the red carpet, we had the opportunity for two student journalists, Izzy Gutierrez and Sarah Oppman from Middle Tennessee News to interview President Sidney McPhee and Dean Beverly Keel about this great experience. Now, President McPhee, tell me about how important it is for us to have this amazing event here at the Murphy Center for MTSU. I think this is really significant. It allows us to really showcase this great university. Uh, not only the academic programs in a world-class media and entertainment college, but also the incredible students and the experience our students in that program are getting on a world-class level. I totally agree with you. Now, tell me, how do you think this university and this event is going to help our university bring more concerts in the future to the Murphy Center? I think the fact that um, we have spent a multi-million dollar renovation of the facility the production of this program will show to other artists 
that this is first class. And um, obviously there isn't a bad seat in the house. It's a very intimate arena and it will allow the talents to really show their excellence. Um, so we're looking forward to having much more of this kind of high profile concert at our university. How are you feeling? Are you excited? I'm so excited. You know, this is put together really quickly, but we've still been waiting. It felt like a long time to get it here, and now it's here, and we're so proud to show off our and our students who are doing such great work, and everybody's so impressed, so we're excited. I was just about to say, we have so many students and alum working here tonight. What does that say for MTSU and our college, just having that many people representing MTSU working tonight? You know, we've had alumni involved since the beginning of this, from alumni working at Sandbox, which is the promoter, to alumni working at CMT, to alumni, who work in the press now, who were at the press conference. I just saw Cindy Watts come in, our alumni who's working for People Magazine. We have our students involved. So I think it shows that MTSU is the place to go if you want to have success in media and entertainment. And so what are you most proud about for tonight's event? Would you say that, that the MTSU involvement there? Well, I'm proud of several things. First of all, I'm proud of the importance that MTSU plays in the industry. I'm also proud, proud of the role Murphy Center has played in the entertainment industry. You know, this marks the 50th anniversary of Murphy Center, and it was also site of the historic Judd's Farewell Concert in 1991. So it's an important part of country music. I keep hearing over and over again, full circle moment. Nick Duggar, who was so involved in this production, talked about how he was here in 91. I ran into a reporter who said, I was a senior in 1991 and my boyfriend took photos. I was in the audience here in 1991. I'm proud to say my seats are better tonight, but I did buy them. I, I did buy them. Uh, so, so many people had a connection to that first show. Uh, I was talking to Stacy Cato, who was at CMT now, and he said, I remember that show, watching on TV that show in 1991 going, what is that industry about? And now he's here as an executive at CMT. So, uh, and personally, I'm so excited to show off Murphy Center. Me too. I think it's a great opportunity and uh, we're super excited. Well, thank you for talking to us tonight. I hope you have a great time at the concert. Thank you. We're so excited. Thank you, Izzy and Sarah. And we'll be right back. I am True Blue. As a member of this diverse community, I am a valuable contributor to its progress and success. I am engaged in the life of this community. I'm a recipient and a giver. I am a listener and a speaker. I am honest in word and deed. I'm committed to reason, not violence. I am a learner. Now and forever. I am a Blue Raider. I am a Blue Raider. I am a Blue Raider. True Blue. Do you want more from your college experience? At Middle Tennessee State University, that's exactly what you get. More. More majors, more opportunities, more guaranteed scholarships. Up to $32,000 over four years. MTSU, Tennessee's University of Opportunities. The Jennings A. Jones College of Business at Middle Tennessee State University is the number one producer of business talent in the greater Nashville area. Our nationally ranked programs and state-of-the-art facilities offer a world-class education at an affordable price. The exclusive partnership of Jones College with Dale Carnegie Training Worldwide equips our graduates with the soft skills they need to succeed. Jones College of Business, it delivers an education for the real world. So many men and women that have served, that expected to be able to have their tuition or certain assistance being given to them, and that money evaporated. With the establishment of the general fund is to make sure that all those men and women can get through MTSU and pursue what they thought they could do when they came on back. We're extremely proud that the Predators have identified the need to help make this fund one of the best at our university for our veterans. Welcome back to Out of the Blue. I'm Andrew Oppmann. Murphy Center looks better than ever for its 50th anniversary thanks to strategic investments we've made throughout the years to keep the facility in prime shape for events like the Judd's Concert in November. One such investment was with Sage Glass, 
a company that installed smart glass throughout the glass house where we can control temperature, light, and improve the environment for fans. Let's take a look at those improvements. Murphy Center is just an icon for this area. I mean, it's just been an incredible facility for so many different individuals, uh, both for the university and for the community. I first came to the Murphy Center back in 2001, I believe it was, as the director. One of the challenges that we had at that time, when the sun came into the glass house, it would tend to uh, sort of blind the uh, players that were on the court. And so one of the things that they did was they extended some vinyl plastic between the gaps uh, in the uh, bleachers. That helped keep the uh, glare down on the floor, allowed the players to play and not have to worry about the glare. On the, uh, in the facility. Sage Glass offers a solution for that. We have almost full glare control and we really provide a comfortable space that is not taxing on the eyes. I am Brooke Graham and I am the Sage Glass Customer Success Manager. And the mission of my role is really to just ensure that the customer has an amazing experience with our product. What makes Sage Glass Smart Windows smart is that they tint or clear in an automated mode based on software. We're reading light conditions, sky conditions, the position of the sun, so the glass is responding to all those variables. And then ultimately people can always override that automated behavior through a mobile app, a touch panel on the wall, or integration with the building management system. The project started with formulating the team, which is ESA, the parent company, and McInerney Glass. The design portion took a year, and the installation portion took 360 days. It took 16 semis full of glass and over 1,300 pieces. And um, we have 33,000 square feet of glass in the project. The uh, initial part of the glass came down. And of course, we had to go in and prepare for any kind of bad weather in case it happened before the glass was replaced. It took a, a team of technicians and installers to make sure that the building was always watertight, that it was always functioning. One of our uh, mandates was that Murphy Center was never to go offline. We worked through uh, storms, we worked through games, we worked through graduations, and we just kept plugging along, working our way around the building until the final glass, piece of glass was put in. When this opportunity came by and, um, and Sage, Sage Glass showed us what this could do, what, it was a game changer. I mean, it really, really was. We were able to take the blinds down and now we can let the sun and the automation do the work for us as opposed to having to manually raise and lower the blinds in order to eliminate the glare. I see universities benefiting from a relationship with Sage Glass by overall comfort and wellness. We know that when people are comfortable, they perform at a higher level. The thing I love most about it is that it is something that I guess everyone driving around the facility has had an opportunity to see the upgrade and to admire it and to appreciate what the Murphy Center is all about and everything that it has meant for the people living in this community and the students and faculty and staff. It's very sentimental to uh, Murfreesboro uh, city and community. Everybody recognizes this anchor on the corner of MTSU. I look forward to, uh, to the Murphy Center being able to do everything that it has done up until this point, hosting uh, athletic events, concerts, speeches, graduations, all of those things for another 50 years. Uh, because I think it's that well built and uh, it is iconic. And we'll be right back. I am True Blue. As a member of this diverse community, I am a valuable contributor to its progress and success. I am engaged in the life of this community. I am a recipient and a giver. I am a listener and a speaker. I am honest in word and deed. I'm committed to reason, not violence. I am a learner. Now and forever. I am a Blue Raider. I am a Blue Raider. I am a Blue Raider. True Blue.
Jennings A. Jones College of Business at Middle Tennessee State University is the number one producer of business talent in the greater Nashville area. Our nationally ranked programs and state-of-the-art facilities offer a world-class education at an affordable price. The exclusive partnership of Jones College with Dale Carnegie Training Worldwide equips our graduates with the soft skills they need to succeed. Jones College of Business, it delivers an education for the real world. Welcome back to Out of the Blue. I'm Andrew Ottman. During the men's basketball game on December 15th, we also gathered in Murphy Center to celebrate the 50th anniversary of the Glass House. At that game, we showed this video, paying tribute to those who helped build and sustain its legacy, and also remembering some of the fantastic memories over the years. In the early 1960s, Ken Tricky, he became a basketball coach and was very successful and came here. And we were very successful. And uh, he was drawing good crowds, which indicated that he uh, always said, we need a, a separate arena for basketball. I'd like to have an arena that seats 6,000 people. Ken Trickey really gets the credit for being the innovator that, that said we, we need to do more than what we're doing right here playing in this small gymnasium. I see a bright future for this basketball program and that he actually put the ideas on the table of we need more seats, we can get larger crowds, this is going to be a dynamic program and, and is the father of, of the whole initiative. In July of 1965, the school's name was officially changed to Middle Tennessee State University. And university president, Dr. Quill Cope, gathered $2 million from leftover funds to put towards improved athletic facilities. In 1966, Dr. Quill Cope, who was the president of MTSU, uh, named a committee. Uh, the committee made up of uh, Coach Bubba Murphy, who was the director of athletics, Dr. Fran Reel, who was director of or chairman of the HPER department, Dr. Eddie Voorhees, who had been kind of handling facilities until I came on board, and I was on the committee. Four of us were on that committee. Planning committee of the four people that I've mentioned, uh, based on their knowledge of the situation, we were talking about a three-phase deal. One, we would build the separate basketball facility. They would seat 6,000 people, and that would be north of the, of the stadium, football stadium, where the, used the old picnic area is, where now the Hall of Fame building is, really. Uh, then we would build a separate, what we would call sports, field sports building, track and all that kind of stuff, you know. Uh, and then we would renovate Alumni Memorial. Well, Dr. Cope retired, and then in 1968, Dr. Mel Scarlett came on and we reviewed our concept with him about what we were thinking. He said, well, that law looks good. But he said, you know, why don't we bid all this in one facility? Well, we, uh, we got to mulling it around and worked with an architect had been named Taylor Crabtree Architects out of Nashville. Uh, we reviewed that thing and lo and behold, uh, the idea looked possible, and they took they took that that concept to the state building commission. That project was approved under the name of an HPER Athletic Convocation Center of all things. <laughs> what a, and you can see that encompassed a lot of stuff. Now we're going back to the building commission. Oh, we've changed our mind. We want this in one facility if we can get it. Uh, so that 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 got approved, and then that set the stage for some other exploring. Coach Jimmy Earle's competitive teams of the 1970s made Murphy Center known as a great basketball arena. 
and Coach Dean Hayes brought in some of the best athletes in the world to compete on the track upstairs. But one phone call to former Director of Student Programming Harold Smith transformed Murphy Center into the premier concert venue of the 70s, 80s, and 90s. Then the next battle was to try to get the attention of a promoter or promoters that would take a chance. And of all the people in the world to get their attention happened with Colonel Tom Parker, with Elvis Presley. Elvis Presley played five shows here. The first year he played two, the following year he played three, but the first show he did put Murphy Center on the map as far as a concert venue. Uh, and from there, my gosh, we got, we dealt with probably anywhere from 18 to 20 different national promoters for shows in Murphy Center. I mean, and during the 30 years that we were here, we did 151 concerts or activities in Murphy Center. We had to practice elsewhere, but the entertainers all use our dressing room. And I remember Elvis Presley used our dressing room. And I told Harold, I said, yes, he can use our dressing room if he gives me two scarves, one for my wife and one for my daughter. Give you the yes. I think I was a freshman in high school and uh, a friend's mom brought us to see Elvis right here. Uh, and I was sitting by uh, one of the vomitories and he walked up the vom that I was sitting beside. So there I was with about 11,000 other people screaming his name. And so that's that vom right over there. You know, we've had some great artists over the years. Uh, I'm so excited about the new mural upstairs because uh, it, it just shows all the people who used to come and do their concerts here. A lot of people today don't realize uh, that we were a concert central before Bridgestone Arena. And so uh, it, it's just phenomenal, the people that were here and, and having the excitement of them being in our facility was always nice. Uh, I remember one day we were uh, practicing in the auxiliary gym and we just snuck up at the end of practice to look at the stage. I believe it was one of the times that Garth Brooks sold out four straight nights. And we came up and we walked up the ramp and there are only a couple of people up here, but there was a guy climbing up and adjusting the lights. And uh, I looked at my manager and I went, that's Garth Brooks. And she went, right, coach, right. And literally, he climbed down, he jumped on the stage, he jumped off beside us, and I went, that's Garth Brooks. And I think he had on his Oklahoma State sweatshirt, and we offered to give him a better sweatshirt. And so he left here with a Lady Raider basketball sweatshirt and eventually actually uh, took pictures in our locker room with the team. So, I mean, how incredible was that? He, he's such a showman, but yet he's also such a gentleman. Uh, knowing that our girls wanted an opportunity to meet him, he certainly accommodated us immediately. I gotta tell you, it's always the people that make it special, but it's also your crew. It's also the faculty that's around there. And I remember coming in, I remember immediately being treated like family. So how do you pay the ultimate respect to a building that you know is gonna be great? You film it for a major network special. We filmed a lot of that here. And I gotta tell you, when they built what was then called the GEC, the Gaylord Entertainment Center, when we talked about going and playing there, I said, gentlemen, we can make a deal if we don't. There's a sweet little spot just south of town. <laughs> I'm telling you, you'll want to play. So I love this place. Great memories and uh, can't thank them enough for not just the start, but they've stayed there. Concerts have been uh, a big part of my life in this building. I, I, you know, for that span of time from the early 80s up through the 90s, you know, you think about all the people that I've seen in this building, you know, First one I ever bought a ticket to here was Dan Fogelberg. Right after that, it was uh, Journey, then Bruce Springsteen, then Elton John, then Billy Joel. Uh, most fun show, I think, was a night we had Lionel Richie and the Pointer Sisters together, which that was a huge night. Uh, one that brought back a lot of memories here recently, um, Olivia Newton-John. Uh, as of September of this year, it was exactly 40 years 
from the night that she was here during her physical tour. And I can tell you this, when Harold Smith uh, ran student programming, he always made sure that whoever the act was, at some point they had some sort of Blue Raider gear on when they were uh, on stage. Well, the night Olivia Newton-John was here, she'd gone through a lot of her hits. She goes off stage for a minute, obviously a costume change. Well, the band cranks up the intro to Let's Get Physical. Well, all of a sudden, Olivia Newton-John bounces out with her dolphin running shorts and her MTSU sweatshirt, and the roof about came off of this place that night. It was, it was so much fun, and you know, having had you 2 in this building, uh, Boston was, was, has played here. Everybody that was anybody in rock and roll during the 70s and 80s played this building. Thanks to the outstanding work of our facilities team in maintaining Murphy Center and the considerable strategic investments we have made, it will continue to be the site of celebrations and special events well into the future. Just this year, we invested almost $6 million to replace the glass in the glass house. And it's not just any glass. They are high-tech smart windows that automatically tint and clear in response to the sun. We are the first university to use this technology at this level. And these improvements paid off when we hosted Winona in November for a sold out concert that will become a national television show for the Jets. A fitting tribute, I might add, to her late mother. We demonstrated at that event that Murphy Center continues to remain a viable arena for history-making performances. And in the future, it is our plan to host many more such events in the Glass House. And that's a wrap on this edition of Out of the Blue. My thanks to the College of Media and Entertainment for allowing us to use their brand new XR studio stage to film this episode while our home at the Center for Educational Media is under renovation. A reminder, you can find campus news 24 hours a day by going to our website, mtsunews.com. You can also find additional special content on our social media platforms, Twitter, Facebook, Instagram, and TikTok. I'm Andrew Ottman. Stay safe, stay on course, and remain true blue.